Nyarikshin, uh, Wenwen. Of the venue holders in the room, how many of you do a land acknowledgement at the beginning of a performance? Please raise your hands. How many of you feel awkward doing it? <laughs> how many people? No? How many uh, have outreach programs for indigenous communities in their cities? How many people have indigenous people sitting on boards? Great, that's pretty good. How many people have an indigenous council that they consult with? We're getting there. So that's good. Uh, there's some movement. Indigenous theater at the National Arts Center has a lot of challenges. We have to be an indigenous theater performance department with a national scope and scale. But who goes to our venues? Who comes to the institutions? The, yeah, our institution, the National Arts Center, needs to be accommodating to the indigenous community. And the, the NAC has been forward thinking about this. They've been engaging with the Algonquin community in Ottawa for the last couple of years. They have an Algonquin advisory council uh, that they've been consulting with. And now that we're here at the National Arts Center, this indigenous department, we now have the job and the role of reaching out to the entire country. 600 and some odd First Nations from ocean to ocean to the north. How do we reach those people? Huge challenges for us. My vision for the NAC Indigenous Theatre Department is to have both a, a split focus on presenting at the National Arts Centre on our prestigious stages and also reaching the communities where the indigenous people reside, going to the north, going to the bush, going to the small communities, and doing shows with a theater for young audience kind of uh, methodology. Re and doing, not just parachuting in and then taking off, but continuing the relationship, going over and over and over, back and engaging with them, and working with them to work with their stories, working with them to see what they want to see reflected on our stages. So part of the challenge for us is geography. How do we be a National Arts Center in, uh, theater company that is engaging with indigenous audiences when most of the, those people live in some of the most remote places in the country? That requires immense logistics and a lot of resources. Uh, I come from a community-based arts practice. I've, for 14 years, I've run a small independent theater company uh, called Savage Society with a split focus where for presenting on our stages and, you know, our, our venues in cities, but also about going to the community and working with the community on their terms. That's what we have to do at the National Arts Center. We need to work with the community on their terms. And to the, the, the title of this panel has the word courageous in it. And in order for an institution to be courageous, they have to be vulnerable. They have to be willing to step forward and make that first step. They have to be willing to go to the communities with an outstretched hand and say, we're here. We are also here for you. And that's a big job. It takes time. It doesn't happen in the first year. It doesn't happen in the second year. It's a long vision. It takes courage. And uh, it also takes patience. For us, the indigenous community, we have to almost overstep the prestige of the National Arts Center. It's an elite space for an elite audience with elite artists. The indigenous community intrinsically feels that that's not for them, that that in and of itself being a national institution on unceded Algonquin territory is counter to their whole world view. And so that is something that we have to overcome, which is huge. We're talking about indigenous plays, even like if you look at the indigenous canon, the, and if you look at the Canadian canon in, in comparison, the last 50 years, since the creation of the National Arts Centre and the Banff Arts Centre and all of the regional theatres that you operate, the new play creation paradigm 
is a nation, has been a nation-building exercise. The indigenous canon challenges that. Every, every single piece of work challenges that paradigm, challenges the narrative that we're all telling our audiences in our venues. And we're going to be doing that at the National Arts Center of Canada every year a block from Parliament Hill. Arts and politics. But also for Indigenous theatre, our culture is not seen so much as a commodity. I mean, it is in the, in the, in the modern commercial paradigm of galleries and theatres. And our dances, our songs, our stories, our medicine. When we do a dance, we're trying to correct something in the world, heal people, heal ourselves. When we tell a story, we are recounting our history, our personal and ancestral history on this land that is far beyond 150 years, far beyond 300 years. In my village, the history goes back to the Ice Age and probably beyond. That is the story of this land. And for so long, the indigenous people have been repressed. Stories have been outlawed. Dances have been outlawed. Masks have been burnt. Big houses have been burnt to the ground. Native people were not allowed to leave reserves without a pass. Apartheid. That's the history that indigenous artists carry on their shoulders. Every time they step on your stages, every time they step on our stages, every time we tell our story. That's the baggage we carry. And that is going to be a huge, that's going to continue. That'll keep coming out. You know, one of the things I did a talk at the NAC uh, when I first got there, and one of the responses after I was finished talking was, you're not going to do missing and murdered women plays, are you? You're not going to do residential school plays, are you? I probably will, because we're not done. We're not done exercising that. We will move through this. We will overcome these, these obstacles, these historical obstacles. And it's through telling our story, doing our dances, and singing our songs. So when I think of courage and bravery of institutions, what the National Arts Centre has done by creating this new department, as they've invited in to that space, that colonial nation-building space, the indigenous perspective, which is counter to the Canadian perspective often. Not always, but often. But through that, through that tension, with that joining of those minds and those worldviews, we can move forward. We can move into 150 plus. We can move into the next century, beginning to incorporate indigenous principles into the very center of the Canadian identity. Not something that's repressed, not something that's niche, not something that is token, but something that is that we can all identify with and carry forward with pride. Thank you.